pitfalls of intellectual snobbery. Beware the fallacy of assuming something is smart, just because it sounds smart. Beware the fallacy of assuming that just because something sounds smart, it is. For example, listen to this. As the epistemological framework of our ontological presuppositions is situated within the dialectical interplay between the subjective and objective, we must reconcile the transcendent noumenal with the phenomenal to arrive at a comprehensive understanding of the nature of reality. However, the recursive and non-linear nature of the quest for truth necessitates an ongoing deconstruction of grand narratives and an embrace of the inherent ambiguity and uncertainty of the human experience. Only by engaging in a constant questioning of our own epistemic biases can we hope to unravel the complexities of quantum mechanics and arrive at a more nuanced comprehension of the mysteries of consciousness. Note that my text does not convey any meaningful or coherent information. It consists of a series of words and phrases arranged grammatically correctly but without logical or semantic coherence. This type of writing is often referred to as word salad. It is used to create the appearance of intelligence or knowledge without actually communicating any meaningful content. Here's another example. The syncretic amalgamation of multidimensional paradigms necessitates a reevaluation of the fundamental structures of our cognitive framework thereby engendering a metamorphosis of ontological and epistemological praxis that reflects a dialectical interplay between the subjective and objective realms of reality. While this sentence may sound complex and sophisticated, it is essentially a string of buzzwords and phrases that lack a coherent meaning or clear purpose. Finally, here's a longer example. Really try to follow along with this. The multidimensional interconnectivity of the collective consciousness and its various permutations across the ontological spectrum is a veritable labyrinthine tapestry, the warp and weft of which are woven by the dialectical interplay between the noumenal and the phenomenal. The very fabric of reality is imbued with a kaleidoscopic array of fractal patterns and archetypal symbols, each imbued with a potent symbolic potency that resonates with the deepest reaches of our being. When we consider the implications of this intricate and multifaceted web of interconnectivity, we are compelled to question the very foundations of our epistemological assumptions. The quest for truth in this context is not a linear or straightforward pursuit, but rather a dynamic and recursive process that is inexorably bound to the ever-shifting contours of our historical and cultural milieu. Moreover, the very act of engaging in intellectual inquiry is predicated upon the existence of a shared language and a common set of cognitive frameworks that enable us to communicate with one another in a meaningful and productive way. However, we must always be mindful of the ways in which our own biases and assumptions shape our understanding of the world around us, and be willing to engage in a continuous process of self-reflection and introspection. Ultimately, the complex interplay between the subjective and objective, the noumenal and the phenomenal, demands that we approach the nature of reality with a profound sense of humility and reverence. Whether we are exploring the mysteries of the human psyche or grappling with the enigmatic nature of quantum mechanics, we must be willing to embrace the inherent ambiguity and uncertainty that characterizes the human experience and be open to the possibility that our own perceptions and interpretations of reality are but one facet of a vast and infinite multidimensional tapestry. In conclusion, the interconnectedness of the collective consciousness and the enigmatic nature of reality demand that we approach intellectual inquiry with a sense of awe and wonder and a deep respect for the complexity and intricacy of the universe in which we find ourselves. Only by engaging in a continuous process of self-examination and introspection can we hope to arrive at a more nuanced and comprehensive understanding of the world around us and the nature of existence itself. Once again, this text is nonsense and does not convey coherent meaning. It consists of complex-sounding phrases and jargon strung together without logical or grammatical coherence, resulting in meaningless text. While such language may sound impressive to some people, it ultimately fails to convey any meaningful message or idea. Using clear, concise, and logical language to communicate ideas and information effectively is essential. Beware the fallacy of assuming that just because something sounds smart, it is. Nonsensical text may be used in various areas where the speaker or writer wishes to appear intelligent or knowledgeable without actually contributing anything meaningful. Some areas where this may occur include 1. Academic writing. In an attempt to impress readers or their peers, some academics may use overly complex language or convoluted sentences that are difficult to understand. 2. Business jargon. In the corporate world, some people may use buzzwords or technical jargon that they may not fully understand in an attempt to sound more knowledgeable. 3. Political speeches. 
Politicians may use vague or grandiose language that sounds impressive but lacks any real substance. 4. Pseudoscience. In some cases, people promoting pseudoscientific theories or products may use scientific-sounding jargon to make their claims seem more legitimate. The easiest way to spot such nonsensical text is to look for language that is needlessly complex or convoluted, needs more clarity or coherence, or uses technical jargon that doesn't make sense in the context of the topic being discussed. Suppose the text is trying too hard to sound intelligent without actually conveying meaningful information. In that case, it may be an example of nonsense. Here are a few sources that discuss the use of pseudo-intellectual language and its potential harm. The Art of BS by Gordon Pennycook and David G. Rand in Skeptic Magazine. This article explores the phenomenon of pseudo-profound language and how it can be used to deceive others into thinking someone is smarter or more insightful than they actually are. Why People Prefer Complex Language by Julie Sedevi and Nautilus. This article delves into the psychology of language and why people tend to prefer complex language, even when simpler language would suffice. The Cult of the Complex by Richard Feynman in Engineering and Science. This essay, written by the Nobel Prize-winning physicist Richard Feynman, criticizes the use of complex language in science and argues that it often serves to obscure rather than clarify ideas. Again, one clue for spotting pseudo-intellectual language is that it often uses big, impressive-sounding words that are not commonly used in everyday speech. Additionally, it may lack concrete meaning or be difficult to parse even upon repeated readings. Finally, it may be used when the speaker or writer tries to impress others rather than genuinely communicating information. Remember, clear and concise language is essential for effective communication. Using complex-sounding language to sound knowledgeable or intelligent without conveying any coherent meaning can be detrimental and is often referred to as word salad. Beware of assuming something is smart just because it sounds smart. It's important to recognize and avoid the pitfalls of intellectual snobbery, whether it's in academic writing, business jargon, political speeches, or pseudoscience. The easiest way to spot such nonsensical text is to look for language that is needlessly complex or convoluted, or uses technical jargon that doesn't make sense in the context of the topic being discussed. Remember to always engage in continuous self-reflection and introspection to avoid falling into the trap of intellectual snobbery. Thank you for listening and join us in our next podcast entitled Understanding Attachment Styles in Relationships the impact of early experiences and how to cultivate a healthy attachment style. 